Coming up next on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan visits an underwater farm where they grow coral. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. Reefs are incredibly diverse marine habitats that are important to the health of tropical ocean ecosystems. Unfortunately, all over the world, coral reefs are being threatened. Coral is very sensitive to temperature and water quality. In some places, the reefs are not looking very good. In the Florida Keys, several species of corals, particularly staghorn coral, which grows in shallow water, have been hit hard by a combination of storms, disease, and predators. Ken Niedemeyer is doing something about it. Ken is the founder of the Coral Restoration Foundation in Key Largo, and he has figured out how to farm staghorn coral. Cameraman Tim and I grab a flight down to Key Largo to meet Ken and learn how his coral farm works. We meet up with Ken on a sunny spring morning for a day of checking up on his underwater crops. I give him a hand putting his boat in the water. Ken takes us less than a mile offshore to the secret location of his coral farm. I thought it might be fun to pick up some corals, kind of show you what we do, you know, pull corals off the trees, tag them, and then uh, bundle them, kind of the whole routine, and then we'll take them out and plant them on the reef. So you can I thought I was just going out to observe, but clearly Ken has plans to try to get some useful work out of me. In fact, he's always looking for volunteers to lend a hand. We arrive on site and Ken ties up to his mooring. Next, I get a briefing on what to expect underwater and what I'll be doing to help. So we have a hundred different genetic strains of staghorn coral here. Ken's weight belt contains an unusual assortment of tools for a scuba diver. Got these. Chisel. In case we see sharks. Next, it's time to suit up and hit the water. The coral farm is only 25 feet deep, and it doesn't look like any coral reef I've ever seen. The coral is being grown on structures that Ken calls coral trees. These grunts are already treating the coral trees like reefs. Each coral tree has a bunch of small pieces of staghorn coral hanging off of it like Christmas tree ornaments. Over time, the corals get larger and larger until they start to crowd each other. What Ken and I are going to do is thin out the large pieces. Ken shows me the technique. Basically, he's snipping off pieces of coral with a pair of wire cutters. Next, it's my turn, and it doesn't feel right to be breaking coral. This goes against everything I've ever been taught. But Ken assured me that it's okay for the coral on the farm. And we aren't going to throw away these coral cuttings. Next, Ken and I are tying short sections of fishing line on all the pieces I cut off. Then we start hanging the cuttings on a tree. Over the next year, they will grow as large as the pieces they were cut from. A local trumpet fish comes in to inspect our work. 
and a resident grouper hides under one of Ken's experiments. Finally, we harvest a dozen or so large pieces of staghorn coral and head back to the boat. That is a very impressive operation. There is a lot of coral growing down there and it seems really happy to be growing on those little coral trees. Very neat. Back on the boat, I fill a tub with water. So this is the coral that we're gonna transplant. So you just, you know, you let them grow out, then you cut them off and hang yeah. more up and let them grow out. And Everything out there started with, all the coral would have fit in this bucket. Really? The whole thing. Next, we move the boat a few hundred yards to a reef where we will transplant the coral we just harvested. So this is a reef called Snapper Ledge. And there's a big ledge on it and there's lots of fish usually. But there's hardly any staghorn coral. You know, a lot of people ask why we roll backwards off the boat. The answer is quite simple, because if you roll forwards, you're still in the boat. Coral ready for transplant. It's pretty amazing. I don't think many people get to do this. I'm going to be part of making a new reef. Down on the bottom, Ken leads me to a barren section of reef that could definitely use some staghorn coral. He starts by scraping off algae and marine growth to clear a section for the newly transplanted coral. Next, he mixes up a putty-like glob of epoxy that can cure underwater. Then he presses the staghorn coral into the epoxy. In a few hours, it will be stuck permanently. Now it's my turn to try the same technique with the next piece. If I don't scrape all the way down to bare rock, then the epoxy won't stick and the coral will most likely die. Ken and I plant about a dozen pieces of staghorn together in an area about four feet across. It takes about half an hour for the two of us to plant all the coral we brought down. And when we're done, the fish are already moving into their new habitat. This is a piece of staghorn coral that Ken planted a year ago. It has already grown over the epoxy and onto the reef. It's doing well and growing quickly. With our mission complete, we head back to the boat. Thanks to the work of Ken Niedemeyer, we now know that at least some species of coral can be farmed and used to replant damaged reefs. While this technique doesn't address the threats to coral, it does provide a new method for restoring damaged reefs. <laughs>